your live streams, how do you make sure you have the best visual quality? And a lot of that has to do with lighting. I'm going to speak to you from a practical standpoint, as I always do. I don't profess to be a photographer or videographer. And frankly, I don't teach people to become that either. What I do want to do is to share with you some things that have worked for me and that have helped me to do better, higher quality live streams. And hopefully some of these tips you can take away and apply them for yourself. So I do want to say good evening. It is, let's see, today is Tuesday, the 28th of July, and it is 6 p.m. Central. This is when we go live on Tuesdays at 6, 6 p.m. Central every week. And what I do is basically share practical strategies to help service providers to build your social influence by using more on-camera and live streaming video. So I want to welcome folks and just say hello. Uh, Crystal is saying I have an echo. I haven't changed anything, so I'm not sure what happened. So maybe there's something going on with audio processing there. Ava, it's good to see you there, ma'am. Wonderful, wonderful. Crystal says it's better now, which is great. All right. So hopefully everything is rolling along. Jackie, good to see you, beautiful. I'm so excited to be here with all of you this evening. And if you have questions about lighting, if there's anything that's kind of coming up for you, let me know. And there's my buddy, Misty. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And LaShawn is here as well. All right, so we're here to talk about lighting. And I'm going to go ahead and play my really quick intro video and I will be right back. We'll give people a chance to come on live and start thinking of your questions and whatever you wanna think about, we can talk about. All right, I'll be right back. See you in a second. All righty, folks. Again, it's me. It's Tanya Smith. At Get Notice with Video, Get Notice with Video Live is when we go live on Tuesdays to do a short training. And so the VIPs are in the house. You are correct, Miss Misty. It's good to see you. And there is Pam. Good to see you as well. So I actually prepared a little bit of a mini training for you tonight since we wanted to talk about lighting. And I actually had a question that was posed by someone in my community I think it was during last week's live and I thought, you know what, I could talk a little bit about that. The question was, how do I improve my lighting? What are some tips and some tricks on how to get better quality video, especially when you're doing live streamings, when it comes to lighting? So I'm definitely seeing some good questions already coming in. So Eva, I'll definitely make sure that I answer your question and I'll pop it up um, in a few minutes. All right. So before I do that, let me just say this. If you this is your first time, I want you to type in hashtag newbie and let me know that it's your first time so I can wave at you and acknowledge you, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Facebook. You may be watching from my group and my community and group are over at Get Noticed with Video VIPs on Facebook. So in order for you to join, you simply go to the Facebook area your Facebook page and type in Get Noticed with Video VIPs and request to join the community. We have some incredible, amazing men and women who are using practical tips to use video and to leverage that for their marketing, right? This is what we're trying to do, use more practical, simplified tips. So I am going to keep it simple today, and I hope that's okay with you. If you would like to get notified when we go live each and every time and you're in Facebook, just type remind me. If you're on YouTube, click on the bell and that will help you to get a reminder notice every time we go live. All right. So I did promise that I'm going to share a little bit of a presentation this evening. I'm going to double check that real quick. Michelle, congratulations on your new book. I'm super excited and thrilled for you. I know that that has come out. That's something you've been working on and you're taking pre-order. So for those of you who are in the VIP community, check with her on that. That was her win that she shared today. All right, folks, let me share my screen real fast and uh, let's dive into this stuff. So we're going to talk about lighting tips. 
And what I will do is I'm going to walk you through three lighting tips, and I'll probably have a little extra bonus advice in there for you as well. So I know, for instance, that there was a question about how do you use proper lighting when you're wearing glasses? And sometimes, especially for those of you in my community, when I'm really like, you know, at bare minimum makeup and glasses, you see me use glasses, but you probably don't see the glare of my ring light. So I'm going to share with you some tips on how I do that. All right. And let's see, Miss Marcia, good to see you. And Sonia, y'all know I love to acknowledge you and to let you know that I'm here with you. This is like real. We're not pre-recorded at this time. Sometimes I do pre-recorded, but very rarely because I love talking with you directly and making sure that I'm answering your questions in real time. So lighting tips. Let's go there. Let's talk a little bit about that. And I'll dive right into the very first tip. I'm going to switch it back here. And let's get into that first tip. So the first tip is this. And some of you have heard me say this before, but the very first and foremost tip, and here's what I'm going to do. I'll share with you that I'm going to kind of take you from the basics and then we'll elevate. Okay. When you are starting out doing live streaming, you're probably not going to have a lot of equipment. You just won't. And frankly, I don't think you have to have a ton of stuff. So please make sure that you're mapping out your budget. And I can help you do that if you need the help. Map mapping out your budget for video equipment before you go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff you don't need. Because if you have a beautiful window, if you've got a window that's giving you really nice lighting, right? The sun is coming through. Um, it's soft, it's diffused, and you can focus this lighting on your face where you sit to do your live streaming. This really is the best way to get high quality live streaming, high quality video. If you can sit in front of a window where the window light is shining on your face, again, soft and diffused, what we have to be careful of is that it's not that overexposed sunlight where you, almost like it's too harsh. We've seen that, right? We've seen those type of pictures where it looks like somebody's squinting into the sun because they can barely see even the camera because it's just so doggone bright. It almost looks orangey. I'm not talking about that kind of light, but natural lighting that flows through your window onto your skin, onto your face is the absolute best lighting. And I learned this actually from the photographers that I work with because I try to do a brand photo shoot like two to three times a year. And the best possible way to get really high quality images, and those are still images, not just video, is to use natural lighting. So we usually find or rent out a place that has that. I want to kind of show you an example. So notice how clean, right, and soft and diffused the light is on my face. I'm going to try to blow it up a little bit. This is me sitting in front of a window. And so at the time I was taking a picture, and of course, there's a little bit of camera magic here, but for the most part, it's just the natural lighting that helped that to glow. And frankly, when you're doing video, if you can find a space in your home or office that has that window, that's going to be your best bet. And a window doesn't cost you a thing unless you got to fix it. <laughs> Right now, if you've been in hailstorms and all that kind of stuff like we have and you have a few windows that may need some repair, that's a little bit of a different story. But if you've got in your home or office a nice little cubby or corner or wall space where the sun is coming through and the window is facing you or even if it's not facing you, if it's that kind of like an, an angle to you, that's going to be a really good possibility for you in terms of doing your video. So I would suggest first tip number one is that you try the natural lighting. Go with the natural lighting anytime you can. Now, I will say that I've lived in homes where there were more windows. The home I live in right now has fewer windows. And so there's less of an opportunity where I sit, where I've seated myself and put my desk and everything to have natural lighting. So I've had to go to the next level and the level after that. So tip one is to go with natural lighting wherever possible. You may even find a place out on your porch. There may be some place that you can sit 
um, if there's a park that's nearby, but someplace where you typically are going to want to do, barring any weather concerns, you're going to want to do your live streams. That natural light is going to give you your best quality. Now, here's the second one. Let me pull this up for you real quick here. Second tip is to use what you have. Use what you have. So I'm going to share kind of a really, I'll share a little tip with you about what I do. Right now, tonight, I'm actually using my ring light, which is going to be in step number or tip number three. But I usually just use a very small and simple lamp. I think this lamp may have cost me like 12 bucks. Um, and I also use a taller lamp. So I have a short lamp that looks a little bit like this one that you see on this table. But then I also have a little bit of a taller lamp that I use to give me a little bit of balance. So the small lamp is on one side, the taller lamp is on the other side, and it has a kind of like a subtle pink glow to it. Part of the reason for that for me is it's part of creating the branding, right? So my brand is really deep in pinks and raspberries. And so I want it to have kind of a tone to my videos. And I'm, I'm giving you this to kind of think about with your own. I did not want the normal um, soft white lighting that you'll see a lot in videos. I wanted a little bit more of a pink tone. So I bought pink light bulbs and I put that into the taller light. And then the other light is just a really soft, subtle lamp. So I'm going to show you the difference in a second. I'm going to try to um, let me do it right now. I'm going to turn off my ring light so you can kind of see hopefully all right so let me show you what i look like right now so see it's there's a little bit of shadow there and i don't necessarily mind the shadow because i like the depth that i still have if you can kind of see the difference there with the camera right it softens my facial features um, it gives you a little bit of a, you see the live on air, it gives that a little bit more glow and the background is still subtle and soft. So there's two things that I'll tell you that I get from that. So first of all, one thing I didn't say, and I meant to say this about tip number one, the most important tip that you want to take away for lighting is that it's important for you to focus on your face because you're speaking into the camera you're talking to your engaged audience. So don't worry so much about making the background lighting perfect. The most important thing is to focus on your face and you talking. So as you're lighting, as you're creating and experimenting with your lighting, make sure that the camera is capturing your face in the way that you want it to be captured. Now I'm gonna turn back on my little ring light so you can kind of see a little bit of difference here. Let's see. And I don't have it up much, but you can kind of see it's still a little bit more clear. And frankly, I depending on what I'm talking about and depending on um, my mood, I've may change that. Like I have it lit up like this or I may make it a little bit more subtle, just depending on what I'm talking about. The other reason why I can get away with both of these types of lighting is that my background is again, it's complementary of the overall vision that I'm trying to create. So the brick background, that brownish goes really well with the pink and goes really well with my skin tone. But I have to be careful with some of the colors that I might wear. So I'm saying all that to say, you need to think about, sure, you need to think about your background. And of course, number one is going to be your face and how well lit is your face. But you also do need to be thinking about the background in terms of the lighting you use and kind of experiment to see if there's if you're creating the impression and the personality that you want to people to see. OK, as it relates to your brand. So let me give you some examples. Um, if you are a person who has created kind of like I've seen this is really popular right now, more of the soft white um, lighting and you have in your background a white wall or a slightly off white wall and then maybe you have some turquoise blue flowers and then you have kind of the fluffy you know pillow cover that is right behind you on your seat and then you've got you know these 
black and white striped images. I wish I had a picture of somebody with this type of background, but the key is you're probably going to use a little bit different lighting than what I'm using right now. Like you're not going to go with that pink bulb. You're probably going to have something that is more of a soft white to complement and draw together those colors so that it doesn't clash. So you want to be thinking about those things. So again, the first thing is focus on your face and use natural lighting as best as you can. But if you're in a situation like I am, where I don't really have a lot of windows around, I've kind of created this brownish, pinkish um, type of tone to all of my stuff, including my content on social media. So the simple lamp works fine for me in certain cases. Um, using both of the lamps that I just described can work fine. And frankly, it's super cheap to do that. Because literally, I think, like I said, $10 maybe on the lamp. It wasn't that much. It wasn't that expensive. Now, I am going to share with you tip number three about upgrading. But let me share this. Let me pull up the tip one more time so you can kind of see something that I don't want to forget. You can also think about or play around with a ceiling lamp or a ceiling light rather. OK, so the ceiling light at the top of your room, wherever you're sitting, play around with that and see what it does. Um, if it is directly, if it's giving good light to focus kind of on your head or the back of your head, then that can create a really nice soft glow. Um, in conjunction with whatever you have that's shining on your face. If it's the natural light that's shining on your face or if it's the small lamp that's shining on your face. That glow from the ceiling light can work if it is subtle enough and not like fluorescent white. OK, the other thing that you have to watch out for, though, is if you're using a ceiling light. So if you just pop your normal switch on for your room, that ceiling light could create a cast of shadows on your face. So you're going to want to test this out before you go live with that. So pop the light on, take a look and see if you've got like deep, dark shadows in different places that you don't want <laughs> to emphasize. And instead, you have that well lit look. OK, again, that's focusing on your face and focusing on you talking to the camera. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my upgrade. This is the third and final tip. Actually, before I do that, let me share this. Actually, let me pass this and I'm going to come back to it because I'm talking about this first. So I mentioned the ring light. Let me pop this up a little bit wider and I'll, I'll just talk about it now. So notice I've got my ring light on and I'm going to show you what that you see my ring light on me right now. Right. So let me switch back. You can see my ring light on, but it's on the lowest level possible. If I didn't just use my ring light, but if I use something called a soft box light, which I'm going to show you in a second what that looks like. If I use that on this background, this brown background, which is a peel and stick. OK, it's not going to look as natural anymore. You can notice in this picture, you can tell now that it's shiny. It's too shiny. It's like overly lit. So I had too bright a white light. It was not yellow or subtle. It was bright white light that was shining and making this look like it is a plastic peel and stick background. Now you see the difference between what I look like here right and what you see in this picture i wanted to show you the difference when you overdo it with the lighting it was too bright it's too bright so this is what i mean when i say that you need to adjust for whatever type of background you're using if you're using a white plain white background in your stuff right or even kind of like an eggshell color you have an opportunity to do a little bit more with your lighting, like you can bring it up a notch <clears throat> and it won't look as bad as what you saw with mine. But I learned by experimenting <laughs> to do more of the soft lamp style lighting because it fit. It was complementary of my background. I hope that's making sense. And then you'll see I also have some little subtle things that I've got right here. These little subtle branches. 
that have pink lighting just to give it a little accent. And you can find these accent lights just about anywhere and LED lights just about anywhere, especially on Amazon right now, because they're the end thing. Like my kid, my 12 year old has a whole strip of LED lights that she's put in her room because she likes the look and the ability to be able to change colors. So you literally can play around with this and see what works for you, depending on your branding and how you want to create because your goal is to create kind of this vision, right? That's matching your personality and matching your branding. So as I was thinking about my studio and I, I've got several videos a while back that I did on creating this little mini studio of mine. And one of the things that I thought about is I wanted something warm. I wanted something that was different. I didn't want just the typical white background with the flowers and the, the sayings and all that stuff. I wanted something that was mine. And I wanted to create a space that felt like me, like it was conversational. And so all of these things, all of these thoughts came into play as I was choosing the lighting and choosing the background. So again, let me just show you that one more time. Look how bright it's overly bright because I have on, actually, I think I'm using a soft box light that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Now, if I use that same soft box light, the picture that you saw me with, let me go back a little bit if I can do that. The picture that you saw me with where I had the natural lighting, this one right here, would look great if that room didn't have windows. Now, it had a ton of windows. It was nothing but windows. And that's why this showed up so well. But if it didn't and I wanted to try to duplicate or mimic the window effect, I would use a soft box. So let me show you what that looks like. And then I'm also going, I brought some show and tell stuff to show you too. Because <laughs> I love this stuff. I really do. But let me show you what a soft box light looks like if I can find it. That's not it. Right there. Okay, so let's blow that up so you can see it a little bit better. So the soft box light is what you see right here on the bottom right hand corner. Okay. You will see these, and most people are using these, especially if you have more of a soft white type of setup. So you've got the white background, and you're trying to create that mimicking of natural light, okay? You want to make sure it's not super fluorescent, but it is more of a natural lighting if you're going to use a soft box. I used to use those all the time time. And so tip number three is if you really want to upgrade your game and you don't have access to really good natural lighting, when you're ready and you know you're going to be committed to doing more live streams, then think about investing in lighting. And so one of your tools in your toolkit may be a softbox. Now, on my website at getnoticedwithvideo.com slash gear, or you can just go to the site and you'll see gear in the navigation. When you click on that, it's going to give you some ideas. It's going to give you links to Amazon directly to some of the tools that I'm talking about. OK, this soft box, again, was one of my very first investments as far as lighting. Um, and I liked it at the time because the wall I was recording on was a white wall. That's number one. Number two, I was also doing a lot more green screening. So I think I kind of showed you my green screen right here. So you see this green when people are using the chroma key or they're using green screen and some people use blue screens, then you probably need something more like a softbox light. OK, that will help you to remove it will it will clear up any shadows and you can see some shadows right here because i don't have my both of my soft boxes on but i usually will have one in one corner and one on the other corner kind of pointing at an angle to my face that way when i use the green screen chroma key it instantly takes away all that green. I'm using it in this image here. It instantly takes away all that green. And so it looks like I'm in the background, like I'm a part of this scene. You can't see the difference, right? It's because of the lighting that I'm using. So right here, I'm actually using soft boxes, one on each corner diagonally, okay, pointing at me. 
So if you're going to use a green screen, then definitely you want to be thinking about, and I'm going to catch, I'm sure there's some questions and comments in here, so I'm going to check that out. Um, yay, Stacy checked in. She's sneaking in. I know this is not her night, <laughs> but yes. And so Misty's using a ring light. Let's talk a little bit about ring light. So here I'm using a soft box. Okay. Um, I think I had another one. Let me try to go back where I'm using my, no, that's a soft box, but on the wrong type of background. Uh, let's see. I think I have one more picture to show you and I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but here's the point I wanted to make with the ring light. So the ring light is what you see right here at the bottom. And this is the exact ring light, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm using right now. It's on a stand. It's on a tall stand. It can dim or I can brighten it. It has these filters. So you see the orange and the white filters. And what I will typically do, I've experimented with this again because I'm looking at my background and kind of trying to make sure that it's complementing. I don't want it to drown me out, but I also don't want it to look like you saw with the really, really extra bright lighting where it just looked like the wall was plasticky. I wanted it to look like a natural, good blend, right, for the visual. So what I've done is I've actually experimented and I took the orange two of the orange filters and put those on the bottom of my ring light. And then I put two of the natural white filters on the top of my ring light. So if you have a ring light and Misty does have one, that's something you can think about if you've got those filters is to play around with those. When I was on a white wall and I had a whole different setup and I was using my green screen more often, then I would use my white and white. So I would use the white on top and the white on the bottom. But now that I wanted to create more of a subtle look that would com complement the brown and the pinks that I use, I have white on top with yellow or orange on the bottom. Okay. And it turns out, I mean, if you, if you like the quality of what you're seeing in my video right now, just type in yes, or type in fire, like an emoji with fire. Because I'm curious if, if you think that the way that my video looks right now is visually appealing, that's the goal. The goal is for it to look like it all fits together. So for you, you've got to experiment with your own lighting, with the room where you're sitting, with windows or no windows, and start experimenting and playing around with what you have to see if you need to invest further or upgrade further. Let me tell you some really quick. So LaShawn has a regular, thank you, ma'am. LaShawn has a ring light. No, Pat has a ring light, but had to add a table light or lamp to get the right lighting. Yes. So that's exactly the point is I'm saying you've got to experiment and kind of play around with this stuff, but don't go overboard by immediately going and buying what people are telling you to buy. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of shadow boxes and light in order to have really good lighting. I still had decent lighting before I ever went out and bought these soft boxes and ring lights. Now, if you want a really quick, cheapy way to do this and you've been using your smartphone, let me give you another tip. Yes, and so. Eva, I'm not going to forget your question. She said, I have a ring light, but it reflects in my glasses. Yes, that is a very common issue. Jackie said, fire. Thank you, ma'am. Sonia, yes. Okay, and Stacy too. So yeah, so, so what I've done works for me, but it may not work for you with the exact formula that I'm using. The goal is I'm trying to give you some nuggets and some things to think about so that you can take it and create your own formula that works. So hopefully these tips are going to do that. So here's a really quick and easy. I don't want to shine it too much in your face, but this is a simple cell phone ring light. OK, this is a cell phone ring light and it goes up to different levels. Look at that. Look how bright it gets. This is perfect. And I think it's like 13 bucks on Amazon. So literally, you can go on Amazon right now or go to my gear page and click on the selfie ring light and you'll have this 
ready to use with your phone. And the way it works is you simply clip it onto your phone like this. And look, ta-da, there you go. So really, you do not have to require, it doesn't require a lot of expensive stuff. This right here will work just as well, especially if you're doing live streaming from your phone. It will give you the quality that you need in a really simple tool that, again, costs under 15 bucks at least, right? And can get to your house by tomorrow or the next day if you're ordering on Amazon. <laughs> I love that. Let me show you another cheap way or a budget way to do this. So here's my very first light ever. This is a light that I purchased at a Home Depot for maybe $5. It's a clip-on light that you can use when you're doing like garage work, right? You're doing repairs. It's a clip-on light and I just bought a bulb that gave me that type of white light that I wanted. Because again, I was using a lot more green screens back then and I was trying to experiment. This may be something that's worth experimenting with for you. I bought two of these and I had one again on each corner diagonally facing downwards at me to give me the, the lighting that I wanted. This is before I ever invested in all the other expensive equipment. I just went and bought a garage light from Home Depot and it worked. It was fine. You just have to figure out what you're going to clip it on. And that became a little bit of a mess for me. <laughs> but I'm trying to give you ideas and ways to think budget friendly, especially right now. So those two options can get you through if you're not at this time in a position to go out and buy the expensive stuff. OK, but I did provide you with the links on my gear page. If you go to get noticed with video dot com slash gear, you'll see some options for you to look into for lighting, for video camera. All of that kind of stuff will be out there. OK, and if you've got questions, just let me know. Misty said this is good. I'm going to need to experiment more with my lighting. Um, let's see. Sonia said, I have a ring light inherited from my daughter because she upgraded. <laughs> she gave me her baby ring light. I also have a tabletop stand and use my phone ring light as needed. It has made a big difference. Yes, lighting is everything. There's two big things that can make or break your live stream besides content. You definitely need to have high quality content. But two big things. One is the sound quality. OK, because when people do turn on the sound and they're not reading your captions, but they hear you, your sound can turn them off or it can make them continue to listen. So sound quality is an investment. The other thing is absolutely lighting. Right. Because lighting to focus on you and focus on your face will help you to appear to be more engaged. And that's what we want. We want our audience to engage with us. Pam says, I love how your tips are practical and easy to apply. Sonia says, I appreciate the budget friendly options and the advice to upgrade as needed. Yes, please don't go out and buy a bunch of equipment that costs a lot of money if you don't need it. Once you find the setup that you want, even if it is that five dollar, you know, five dollar store lamp that you put on the side at the just the right place, that may be sufficient. So you just need to experiment with it. Another thing that I will tell you that has really kind of updated my um, my game is the camera. But again, I don't want you going out and paying five hundred and six hundred dollars right now, especially if doing video is not yet your thing on a regular basis. Don't do that yet. Later on, think about a DSLR camera that also helps with the lighting. So as I always say, every time I give these practical tips, Keep it simple. Experiment before you go live. Get some tips. Get a second pair of eyes on it. Get somebody to tell you what it looks like. You know, sometimes we're we're not our best critics. <laughs> sometimes we need to get a second opinion or a third opinion. And don't forget to position yourself as the focal point. But you start with what you have first. Experiment. Get a second pair of eyes and position yourself as the focal point. These are the important tips. So here's what I'm going to do is do a really quick recap to make sure that you've got all this advice. And hopefully you can kind of play around a little bit and see what works for you and, and what may not work for you. Right. 
Um, let's go to our banners and see. So the first tip was to start with natural lighting. So wherever you can, try to use natural lighting. Number two is use what you have. So play around with what you have. And then definitely, if you're going to upgrade, invest first in the budget-friendly options to see what could work. Figure out the possibilities. And then number three is to invest in lighting. When you're ready and you know, you know what, I'm going to be doing live streams regularly. This is something that I need to do for my business to promote myself. Then go ahead and create a budget. Stick with your budget. So the question about, and now let me go scroll back to Eva's question about um, glasses, because that's a really good one. She said, what type of lighting do you recommend while wearing glasses? Because the ring light can be challenging. So what tends to happen, what Eva's talking about is when you're using a ring light, when you have your glasses on, and I'm going to see if I can kind of mimic it here. Let's see if we can do it there. You can kind of get a feel for it, but there's a ring light, right? In the It's glaring in my phone. So if I were wearing glasses, you'd see two ring lights right here if I had my ring light on and it was directly facing into my glasses. So a couple of really quick tips that I would suggest to you to try, Eva. One is turn your ring light on the lowest dimmable possible lighting and see if that helps. Two, turn the ring light off. In fact, when I wear glasses, I usually do not use the ring light because I don't want the little circles in my glasses. Instead, what I'll do is rely more on the natural lighting that I was showing, or not natural lighting, but the lamp lighting that I was showing you that I have on each side. So my subtle, taller pink light, as well as the smaller lamp that's just slightly above my desk. I have those and use those to come at me at an angle. I did hear a tip the other day and I haven't tried this yet, but um, another person who does video marketing said, have a taller ring light if you're going to use a ring light or a soft box and have that angled down like this instead of coming straight directly at your face and at your glasses you're going to have it coming kind of like at an angle like this and that that may help to reduce the glare of those circles they can't see that but you'll have to experiment with those things for me again just using the lamp the table lamp works pretty well along with the backup you know the other side lamp all right, let's see what else we got. Any other questions? Love the budget. Okay, we did talk about that. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the fires. Yes, and I, I love, okay, so LaShawn said, I have a regular ring light and a cell phone ring light. Yep. And um, clip on ring light. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no good natural lighting, Pat. I know a lot of people struggle with that. Um, it's because many of our homes, depending on where you live, weren't built with all that lighting. Like I live in Texas. And so many of our windows have the tint. You know, we have the extra shade that's been put on top of our windows to make sure that, you know, it stays better insulated. And we just don't have a lot of windows in the space where I choose to record. So I had to kind of make up for that by doing some experimenting. And that's what I want to encourage you all to do, too, is experiment with your space. You know, find a space that's going to make you happy, that you enjoy doing the recordings in, because that's the most important thing, that you need to feel like joy, right? You need to feel like this is where I want to do my live streams and where I feel confident and where I feel like I'm going to give this message and it's just going to come flowing out of me. Think about that and then think about, OK, wait a minute. What is the time of day I'm going to be delivering this message? How is that impacting my natural lighting? And if I don't have natural lighting at that time that I'm going live or I just don't have enough windows, what else can I do? And some of these tips that I've shared with you this evening hopefully can help. All right. You are so awesome, Texas girl here, too. I feel you. Mwah. Let's see. Brad said, love your set is your brick wall fabric. Actually, it's not. It's a it's a peel and stick. It's a peel and stick. So when I was trying to decide about my studio, one of the things that I found, Brad, is I looked for I looked for images because I was using a lot of green screens. 
I looked for images and backgrounds that I was finding all over the place that I was using more frequently in my green screen. And I tend to have an affinity for the browns and the bricks and the earthy tones and that kind of stuff. So I decided to go find myself since I didn't have a brick wall <laughs> to go find myself a peeling stick. And it works. It just kind of turned out. So that's get creative and think about what works for you. What is going to be really complimentary of your brand and it's going to complement your message, what you're trying to share. And it just feels like home to you when you sit in that space. That is what I've tried to create. And hopefully that's come across in the videos that we do. All righty, folks. That's so true. When I got my lighting right, I felt so much more confident when I went live yesterday. Yes, Pat. That's what I'm talking about. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for giving me the time. I know we went a little bit over. We've been doing that. I've been doing that lately. I can't blame it on you. <laughs> but I just get so riled up with this stuff. I love this stuff. And I hope that it's been helpful for you and that it will give you some tips that you can use on a practical level without having to become a pro at videography. I just want you to be able to leverage more video in your marketing. For those of you who are going to be meeting with me this Friday, we have our boot camp. It's a three hour boot camp where we're going to be creating and repurposing video content. So we're taking a video. Actually, the video will be pre-recorded. So you're recording that as your homework in advance. And then on Friday morning, we're going to get together in our small boot camp. And we're going to create the heck out of some other content that we can post on our social media and other platforms. So in order for you to be able to access that camp, you need to go to repurposeyourlivevideo.com. Feel free to go ahead and join in. You can sign up all the way until midnight on Friday morning because I have information I want to make sure you get before then. So we've got to close the registration down midnight. So Thursday midnight, Friday morning. We're going to be meeting at 9 a.m. Central Time, and we're going to be on together for three hours, creating some content and having a little fun. Thank you so much again, and I hope that you all have an amazing rest of the week. And thank you, Misty. Oh, let's see. There's a question. Sorry, Miss. Please tell me in little what is lighting right. Ooh, well, I probably would recommend Terry. I think it's Terry to just go back and listen to the replay with some information. I'll share some information on three tips that may be helpful for you. And thank you, Misty. I love you guys too. I appreciate you. Have a good rest of the week. And for those of you who I'm going to see on Friday, I'm looking forward to it. All right. Take care.